everyone. This is an update to the video I made on uh, how the MR2 supercharger works. And uh, thanks to Mark at MR2.net. He sent me an email with some, with some tips and uh, some new information. So thanks to him. Uh, I just have some clarifications to go through about uh, the system here. Uh, just as a recap, if you haven't watched the other video already, this is the basic layout of the MR2 supercharger system. Uh, the air comes in through the intake manifold, flows through the throttle body, which is controlled by your gas pedal, and it has two flow paths. It can either go through the supercharger being compressed, or it can bypass the supercharger uh, going through something called the air bypass valve, which controls this, this uh, flow route. And then they meet up, goes through the intercooler, then into the intake manifold, and then off to the engine. So the things I wanted to clarify are uh, what controls the air bypass valve, the ABV, and a few other things. So first off, the air bypass valve has two modes. Like I talked before, it has the blow-off mode, which is controlled by a positive pressure in the intake manifold, and then it has the uh, bypass mode, which is controlled by a vacuum, which is uh, generated in the intake manifold. So there are actually two lines and these are just hoses, vacuum and pressure hoses, which connect the intake manifold to the air bypass valve. And this just transmits pressure, you know, in a mechanical sense to this valve, which either opens or closes based on values of pressure or vacuum, again, which we talked in the other video. So just want to make that clear. It's actually a physical connection with uh, pressure being transferred through uh, uh, vacuum and pressure tubes. Another thing is, in the video before, uh, I said that the whole system is controlled by a pressure sensor measuring pressure in the intake manifold. So this is, this is true, but only for late model uh, 4A GZE engines, which is the supercharged engine found in the MR2. Uh, only in late model ones that are actually found in Corollas, not in uh, MR2s. In the MR2 system, what it uses instead of this, so it doesn't have a pressure sensor here, what it has is something called an airflow meter right here. And this is actually just a simple uh, door flap system. So think of it as like a door with a hinge. And the more air that flows through this intake, or intake system uh, pushes this door open, you know, open or closed based on how much air is flowing through. And this, this is a way of measuring the amount of air going into the engine. And this information is sent to the engine's brain called the ECU, instead of the pressure value, which is uh, sensed by something called a MAP, or a manifold air pressure sensor, uh, which I was talking about in the, in the other video. So again, uh, air flow meter goes to the ECU. Uh, the ECU also measures, as Mark points out, it measures the, the temperature of the engine. So we have temperature going in here as well as well as the throttle body position, so how, you know, how open or closed the throttle body is. That's another signal that goes in. And uh, all, these, you know, all these signals, uh, a bunch of computations occur in the, in the ECU, and it determines when the supercharger should be on, when it should be off. You know, it's more complicated than what I was talking about before, where it was just a simple pressure measurement determining whether this is on or off. It's a little bit more complicated than that. And again, thanks to Mark for pointing that out. The last thing here is that uh, when I was talking before about this air bypass valve system, I sort of alluded to the, to the possibility of this being able to bypass all the air that's coming into the intake manifold. Uh, that's not the case. This just can, can only bypass a portion of the airflow. So no matter what, airflow is still going through the supercharger, even if it's not engaged, so even if it's not the electromagnetic electromagnetic clutch is not engaged on the supercharger, air is still flowing through it, uh, which is why it actually spins uh, when it's not in use anyway. And again, that's uh, due to Mark let me know of this, so that's uh, good to know that not all the air, air can bypass the system, just a portion of it, um, which would make sense because the actual physical tubes compared to the size of the supercharger are you know, much smaller. So again, this is just an update on you know, understanding how the MR2 supercharger system works. Uh, I apologize for the earlier uh, incorrectness. Uh, just fixing a few things here. 
And uh, if you notice anything else, send me an email and we can uh, continue to learn.